The Barents Sea Norwegian, Barentshavet, Russian, Barentsevo Mor, Barentsevo Mor is a marginal sea of the Arctic Ocean, located off the northern coasts of Norway and Russia and is divided between Norwegian and Russian territorial waters. Known among Russians in the Middle Ages as the Merman Sea, Norwegian sea the sea takes its current name from the Dutch navigator Willem Barent S.Z. It is a rather shallow shelf sea, with an average depth of 230 metres 750 feet, and is an important site for both fishing and hydrocarbon exploration. The Barents Sea is bordered by the Kola Peninsula to the south, the shelf edge towards the Norwegian Sea to the west, and the archipelagos of Svalbard to the northwest, Franz Josef Land to the northeast and Novaya Zemlya to the east. The islands of Novaya Zemlya, an extension of the northern end of the Ural Mountains, separate the Barents Sea from the Kara Sea. Despite being part of the Arctic Ocean, the Barents Sea has been characterized as turning into the Atlantic because of its status as the Arctic warming hot spot. Hydrologic changes due to global warming have led to a reduction in sea ice and in stratification of the water column, which could lead to major changes in weather in Eurasia. Topic Geography Topic The southern half of the Barents Sea, including the ports of Murmansk Russia, and Vardo Norway, remain ice-free year-round due to the warm North Atlantic drift. In September, the entire Barents Sea is more or less completely ice-free. Until the Winter War 1939 Finland's territory also reached to the Barents Sea, with the harbour at Petsamo being Finland's only ice-free winter harbour. There are three main types of water masses in the Barents Sea, warm, salty Atlantic water temperature greater than 3 degrees Celsius, salinity greater than 35 from the North Atlantic drift, cold Arctic water temperature 3 degrees Celsius, salinity The lands of Novaya Zemlya attained most of their early Holocene coastal deglaciation approximately 10,000 years before present. Topic extent topic The International Hydrographic Organization defines the limits of the Barent SZC SIC as follows, on the west, the northeastern limit of the Norwegian Sea a line joining the southernmost point of West Spitsbergen SIC to North Cape of Bear Island, through this island to Cape Bull and thence on to North Cape in Norway 25 degrees 45 e. on the northwest, the eastern shore of West Spitsbergen SIC, Hinlopen Strait up to 80 degrees latitude north, south and east coasts of Northeast Land Island of Nordauslande to Cape Lee Smith 80 degrees 05 and 28 degrees 00 e. on the north, Cape Lee Smith across the islands Bolshoi Ostrov Great Island Storoya, Giles Kvitoya, and Victoria, Cape Mary Harmsworth southwestern extremity of Alexandra Land along the northern coasts of Franz Josef Land as far as Cape Colsat 81 degrees 14 and 65 degrees 10 e. on the east, Cape Colsat to Cape Zelania Desire, west and southwest coast of Novaya Zemlya to Cape Kusov Nos and thence to western entrance Cape, Dolgaya Bay 70 degrees 15 and 58 degrees 25 e, on Vagic Island. Through Vagic Island to Cape Greben, thence to Cape Belly Nos on the mainland, on the south, the northern limit of the White Sea a line joining Sivatoy Nose Murmansk coast, 39 degrees 47 e, and Cape Cannon. Other islands in the Barents Sea include Chechi and Timanes. Geology. <laughs> <laughs> The Barents Sea was originally formed from two major continental collisions, the Caledonian Orogeny, in which the Baltica and Laurentia collided to form Laurasia, and a subsequent collision between Laurasia and western Siberia. Most of its geological history is dominated by extensional tectonics, caused by the collapse of the Caledonian and Euralian orogenic belts and the breakup of Pangaea. These events created the major rift basins that dominate the Barents Shelf, along with various platforms and structural highs. The later geological history of the Barents Sea is dominated by late Cenozoic uplift, particularly that caused by quaternary glaciation, which has resulted in erosion and deposition of significant sediment. Ecology <inaudible> <inaudible> Due to the North Atlantic drift, the Barents Sea has a high biological production compared to other oceans of similar latitude. The spring bloom of phytoplankton can start quite early close to the ice edge, because the fresh water from the melting ice makes up a stable water layer on top of the sea water. The phytoplankton bloom feeds zooplankton such as Calanus finmarchicus, Calanus glacialis, Calanus hyperboreus, Oithona spp., and krill. The zooplankton feeders include young cod, caplin, polar cod, whales, and little auk. 
The caplan is a key food for top predators such as the northeast Arctic cod, harp seals, and seabirds such as common guillemot and brunnix guillemot. The fisheries of the Barents Sea, in particular the cod fisheries, are of great importance for both Norway and Russia. SIZEX-89 was an international winter experiment where the main objectives were to perform sensor signature studies of different ice types in order to develop SAR algorithms for ice variables such as ice types, ice concentrations and ice kinematics. Although previous research suggested that predation by whales may be the cause of depleting fish stocks, more recent research suggests that marine mammal consumption has only a trivial influence on fisheries and a model examining the impact of fisheries and climate was far more accurate at describing trends in fish abundance. There is a genetically distinct polar bear population associated with the Barents Sea. History Topic. Topic. Name Topic. The Barents Sea was formerly known to Russians as Murmanskoy Mori, or the Sea of Mermans, i.e., Norwegians, and it appears with this name in 16th century maps, including Gerard Mercator's map of the Arctic published in his 1595 atlas. Its eastern corner, in the region of the Pechora River, S estuary, has been known as Pekorskoy Mori, that is, Pechora Sea. This sea was given its present name in honor of Willem Berendt Sz, a Dutch navigator and explorer. Berendt Sz was the leader of early expeditions to the far north, at the end of the 16th century. The Barent Sea has been called by sailors, the Devil's Dance Floor. Due to its unpredictability and difficulty level, the Barent Sea has been called by ocean rowers, Devil's Jaw. In 2017 after the first recorded complete man-powered crossing of the Barents Sea from Tromso to Longyearbyen in a row boat in 2017 by Polar Row Expedition, Captain Fian Paul was asked by Norwegian TV2 how a rower would name the Barents Sea. Fian responded that he would name it Devil's Jaw, adding that the winds you constantly battle are like breathe from the Devil's nostrils while he holds you in his jaws. Modern era Topic. Seabed mapping was completed in 1933 with the first full map produced by Russian marine geologist Maria Klenova. The Barents Sea was also the site of a notable World War II engagement, a German surface merchant raiding attack on a British convoy that later became known as the Battle of the Barents Sea. Under the command of Oscar Cummitz, the German warships sank minelayer HMS Bramble and destroyer HMS Achates, but in turn lost destroyer Z-16 Friedrich Eckholt and Admiral Hipper was severely damaged by British gunfire. The Germans later retreated and the British convoy arrived safely at Murmansk shortly afterwards. During the Cold War, the Soviet Red Banner Northern Fleet used the southern reaches of the sea as a ballistic missile submarine bastion, a strategy that Russia continues. Nuclear contamination from dumped Russian naval reactors is an environmental concern in the Barents Sea. Economy Political status for decades there was a boundary dispute between Norway and Russia regarding the position of the boundary between their respective claims to the Barents Sea. The Norwegians favoured a median line, based on the Geneva Convention of 1958, whereas the Russians favoured a meridian-based sector line, based on a Soviet decision of 1926. This led to a neutral, grey, zone between the competing claims that had an area of 175,000 sq.km, which is approximately 12% of the total area of the Barents Sea. The two countries started negotiations on the location of the boundary in 1974 and a moratorium on hydrocarbon exploration was declared in 1976. In 2010, Norway and Russia signed an agreement that placed the boundary equidistant from their competing claims. This was ratified and went into force on 7 July 2011, opening the grey zone for hydrocarbon exploration. Oil and gas 
Encouraged by the success of the North Sea in the 1960s, hydrocarbon exploration in the Barents Sea got underway in 1969. The Norwegian authorities acquired seismic reflection surveys through the following years, which were analyzed to understand the location of the main sedimentary basins. Norsk Hydro drilled the first well in 1980, which was a dry hole, and the first discoveries were made the following year, the Alk and Askeladden gas fields. Several more discoveries were made on the Norwegian side of the Barents Sea throughout the 1980s, including the important Snovit field. However interest in the area began to wane due to a succession of dry holes, the wells only containing gas which was cheap at the time and the prohibitive costs of developing wells in such a remote area. Interest in the area was reignited in the late 2000s, after the Snowhit field was finally bought into production and two new large discoveries were made. Exploration on the Russian side got underway around the same time as that on Norwegian side. Encouraged by the success in the Tymon Pechora Basin, the first wells were drilled in the early 1980s and some very large gas fields were discovered throughout this decade. The Stockman field was discovered in 1988 and is classed as a giant gas field currently the fifth largest gas field in the world. However, due to the same reasons that interest declined in the Norwegian side of the Barents Sea, in addition to the political instability of the 1990s, interest in the Russian side of the Barents Sea declined. Fishing the Barents Sea contains the world's largest remaining cod population, as well as an important stocks of haddock and kaplan. Fishing is managed jointly by Russia and Norway in the form of the Joint Norwegian-Russian Fisheries Commission, established in 1976, in an attempt to keep track of how many fish are leaving the ecosystem due to fishing. The Joint Norwegian-Russian Fisheries Commission sets total allowable catches tax for multiple species throughout their migratory tracks. Through the Commission, Norway and Russia also exchange fishing quotas and catch statistics to ensure the tax are not being violated. However, there are problems with the system and the effects of fishing on the Barents Sea ecosystem are not completely accurate. Cod is one of the major catches. A large portion of catches are not reported when the fishing boats land to account for profits that are being lost to high taxes and fees. Since many fishermen do not strictly follow the tax and rules set forth by the Commission, the amount of fish being extracted annually from the Barents Sea is underestimated. Topic Barents Sea Biodiversity and Marine Bioprospecting topic The Barents Sea, where temperate waters from the Gulf Stream and cold waters from the Arctic meet, is home to an enormous diversity of organisms, which are well adapted to the extreme conditions of their marine habitats. This makes these Arctic species very attractive for marine bioprospecting. Marine bioprospecting may be defined as the search for bioactive molecules and compounds from marine sources having new, unique properties and the potential for commercial applications. Amongst others, applications include medicines, food and feed, textiles, cosmetics and the process industry. The Norwegian government strategically supports the development of marine bioprospecting as it has the potential to contribute to new and sustainable wealth creation. Tromso and the northern areas of Norway play a central role in this strategy due to excellent access to unique Arctic marine organisms and the presence of marine industries and R&D competence and infrastructure in this region. Since 2007, science and industry have cooperated closely on bioprospecting and the development and commercialization of new products. Topic institutions and industry supporting marine bioprospecting in Barents Sea topic Mabcent SFI is one of 14 research-based innovation centers initiated by the Research Council of Norway, and is the only one within the field of bioactive compounds and drug discovery that is based on bioactives from marine organisms. Mabcent SFI maintains a focus on bioactives from Arctic and sub-Arctic organisms. By the end of 2011, Mabcent has tested about 200,000 extracts, finding several hundred hits. Through further research and development, some of these hits will become valuable leads, i.e. characterized compounds known to possess biological effects of interest. The commercial partners in Mabcent SFI are Biotech Pharmacon ASA and its subsidiary Arcticzymes as, ABC Bioscience as, Lytics Biopharma as and Pronova Biopharma ASA. Arcticzymes is also a partner in Marzymes, a project financed by the Research Council of Norway to find marine enzymes which are adapted to the extreme conditions in the Arctic. 
The science partners in Mabcent SFI are Marbank, a national marine biobank located in Tromso, Marbio, a medium, high throughput platform for screening and identification of bioactive compounds, and Norstruct, a protein structure determination platform. Mabcent SFI is hosted by the University of Tromso. Biotech North is an emerging biotechnology cluster of enterprises and R&D organizations, which cooperate closely with regional funding and development actors Triple Helix. As bioactive molecules and compounds from Arctic marine resources form the basis of activities for the majority of the cluster members, Biotech North serves as a marine biotech cluster. The majority of Biotech North's enterprises are active within life science applications and markets. To date the cluster contains around 30 organizations from both the private and public sector. It has received ARENA status and is funded through the ARENA program financed by Innovation Norway, Shiva and the Research Council of Norway. Stakeholders of Biotech North include Barents Biocenter Lab, Biostruct, Marbank, Norit, Nefima, Mabcent SFI, University of Tromso, Unilab, Barentsimes AS, Trophy, Scandiderma AS, Prophylix Pharma AS, Olivita, Marialis, Procello, Probio, Lytix Biopharma, Intigorgan, Deliver, Genic, Cognas, Claris, Chitinor, Kalanis AS, Biotech Betaglicans, Ayanda, Arcticzymes AS, ABC Bioscience, Actaplaniva. Topic see also topic Barents Basin Continental Shelf of Russia Energy in Norway List of largest biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies List of oil and gas fields of the Barents Sea List of seas topic Notes topic topic References topic Ole Gunnar Ostvik 2006, Oil and Gas in the High North, Security Policy Library No. 4, The Norwegian Atlantic Committee. ISSN 0802-6602. C. Michael Hogan, 2008, Polar Bear, Ursus Maritimus, GlobalTwitcher.com, ed. Nicholas Stromberg, World Wildlife Fund, 2008, Barents Sea Environment and Conservation, Zeberg, Jopjan, David J. Labinsky, Stephen L. Foreman, September 2001, Holocene Relative Sea Level History of Novaya Zemlya, Russia and Implications for Late Weichselian Ice Sheet Loading, PDF, Quaternary Research. Quaternary Research Center, Elsevier Science. 56 2, 218-230. Bibcode, 2001 KERS, 218 z DOI, 10.1006, QRES.2001.2256. ISSN 0033-5894. Topic external links Topic Baron C. Encyclopædia Britannica, 3, 11th ed., 1911. Barents. Com. Developing the Barents Region Foraminifera of the Barents Sea. Illustrated Catalogue.